Hi everybody, it's Willow from Willow Moon Mystical. Willow Moon Mystical is my shop in Homosassa, Florida. It's also my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. And today I'm going to talk with you about painting your own seasonal altar cloth or an altar cloth for a special Sabbath. So while over at the Dollar General, I came across these little lace doolies and they had leaves on them and I just fell them up. Now the Dollar Tree used to um, have similar that were like the polyester and not the paper. I hate the paper, but they no longer carry these. I have not been able to find them on the website or in any of the stores. So when I came across these ones, I was really ecstatic as these has leaves in it and I couldn't wait to get to painting it. Now the paint I use is just your generic watercolors. That's all it is. This is a little $5 set from Michaels. I didn't even pay $5 for it. I used a 40% coupon that I had and it was only like $3 and something. So this is what I use to paint my cloths. And what I, what I did is I, um, if you look, it looks like a sunflower. So I painted this yellow to represent the sunflower. Then I went around it with orange now looks like we have two maple leaves and an oak leaf so i'm just kind of like dyeing these painting these you know we've got the yellow in the middle with the orange and a little bit of green i want to add a little bit of red down into this i'm going to add some red and green into the oak and then i'm going to add some yellow and some green and red into this um maple leaf i used brown to represent my stems and i went around the whole thing giving it a brown edging now, here's one thing you will find out when you're watercoloring, it will bleed on each other, but I'm going to show you. With me, I don't mind it. It gives it more of a tie-dye effect, like this here, and I'm good with that. But if you would like a little bit of sharper edges, I can also show you how to do that. So, the first thing I wanted to do, I am using two brushes. These are water brushes. I am using a, a 3 4 inch uh, Nick Pro Orville brush, and I am using a 6 um just a Nico Pro. So these are the two brushes I'm using. And just let me show you how how I do this. I first just, I get some water. And see, I'm working with orange. And then I just go into the orange and I really get it wet. And then I go over and I just start pulling it in. You know, just painting it. it don't, the water really soaks in. And like I said, you will, it will bleed. If you don't like the bleed, you can... Um, let it dry and then go back over it or take a paper towel and soak some of it up. The thing of it is, is you do want to keep your paints wet. So I'm finishing off this orange here. And you can see how lovely, how lovely that just does. It just really does. And it doesn't take a whole lot to do this. And so then now, up here I like to have that just a little darker so I can just go in and add some more in there now clean my brush and I want to go back into my brown and this is the edging I was talking about this will let my flower pop a little bit so now I'm taking that in and I'm just going over that with a brown See, it's very simple to create one of these and when it dries because it is polyester you'll have it for you know years and years to come if you wish or you can make one each year i had um some that were made before we transferred to florida but i let them go because i had them for a while and i just wanted to start new but then the dollar tree stopped carrying them didn't know what to quite think of that one so there we go. Get a little bit of darkness into that. Okay, so I'm going to go back over the, I think the stems here a little bit. And then um, I'm going to clean this brush out. I think I want to use this little one because I want to go in and start putting some yellow into this one. So I'm going to go in here and just start rubbing in some yellow. These are very simple to make. But they're so pretty and they're such fun to just watch them come alive. I think I might switch back to my bigger brush for this. 
Here we go. Let's see how this does. Here. Ooh, it gives me a little brown too. I didn't. I don't mind that at all. So there you go. As you can see, I'm blending a little bit of yellow in. Perfect. I really like that. Now I think I want to add just a little bit of green. And the green I'm using is the really light green. I used this one originally on the on the tester and this green here or it was this green here this green here it turned out to look more of a blue than the dark green it normally turns out to be on paper so let's go in and see where this is connecting into this I want to paint the tip of the leaf green and just let that bleed on in a little bit and that's going to separate that And I think I want to do a little bit more over here on this side. And what that does is it just separates it from that final trim on that flower. Where the orange meets up with the orange. Now, um, because I have another pack of this, they come in two. You get two in a pack. But I used the first one as a tester. And then this is the one that I actually wanted to, um, I actually wanted to, uh, create with and use and then I have the other pack and I think I'm going to save that for um, Bridget's feast day in bulk and the reason is is because I can repaint these leaves bright spring green colors and then make this flower like maybe like um, uh, the promise of springs so maybe like a violet or something which is probably what I'll do because violets are still you know my favorite flower spring flower even though I really don't get them here in um, Florida, but that's okay. So there you go. You can see where I've added in some green to separate it, to separate it from um, the trim of my flower there. So now I want to go back in and put a little bit yellow, a little bit more yellow, I think. Yeah. Perfect. I really like that. That's perfect. I really like that. So now you can see here, I need to add a little bit more yellow on that edge here. So I'm just going to go over that and fill that in a little bit. Now here's what I was talking about. If you don't like how it's bled, like say with this orange, let's pick up some orange. You see where this brown came in? Once it starts drying, you can go back over it and fill in a little bit more of the color that you want. You know, if you want sharper edges like here you can see where this bled in so I can go over a little bit to just bring back a little bit of a sharper edge and that's only if you want to you don't have to now this in here I think I I don't want to take that a green because I'm afraid it's so I think I need to take that to the yellow because it's supposed to be part of that flower Perfect. That's good enough. It blends in pretty well, I think. Okay, so I need to get a little bit of orange there. I want to touch that up, that orange up around there. I think I'm really happy with that. Now, I want to take this, I want to take the green and the yellow in together with just a little bit of orange. This is an oak leaf, but the thing about it is, is this red does not appear that red on here so that's where I'm going to have to leave it a little bit more up to my imagination and you'll see what I'm talking about once I start applying well there it goes I guess that does look like more of a red I want to keep that paint wet and because this is a strong pigment it may bleed into a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the yellow but we can always touch that up just a little bit of this red and put it in with because these do have a little bit of red into them as well there we go over here maybe a little bit 
Oh, that's really pretty. I don't want to dominate it, but I do want to get some red down in there, and I think I think that's perfect. So now back to this one. You can see where I'm really got that red in there. I'm not going to say it's a cherry red, but when it dries, you know, it's going to be a lighter red, but that's okay. I'm pretty well, I like that too. Now I'm going to take this green that I've been using, and I want to mix this in with it as well. See how that just soaks that in? So out by my shop in the back, what I found is I got a couple of oak trees. And let, let me tell you how I found this out, okay? I've only been in my shop a month. The other day I went, I wore real thin little tennis shoes and I went to carry some stuff into the back of the shop. And um, as I was walking up there, I stepped on something that caused me to roll my ankle and it was an acorn and so I um, I looked around on the ground paid attention and there was acorns everywhere I'm a little bit more red down in here there was just acorns everywhere so Sunday Saturday rather while we was there I did go out and I gathered a mass of them I just put them in the shop for people who might want to collect some to use on their uh, their Samhain altar or their autumn altar or their ancestor altar and uh, I collected some for myself too that I'll be using on my altar then I went out and I collected some sticks to make a new pinnacle for my altar like this you know just some sticks and put them together this sits on the little makeshift altar I use here out back especially when I do my videos and things and so Ty no Ty is my little dog and if he sees another dog out he's going to start barking if he doesn't we'll have to pause this video and put him back in the house and when it thunderstorms he has to bark to protect us from the thunder gods or protect us from the thunderstorm because he believes he's a thunder god. And then when it stops stops thundering, he keeps barking at the sky, trying to initiate to get going all over again. I think I'm going to work on that oak leaf a little bit after it starts drying. Let's see if I can get. Okay, I think I want to just take. I like the green. Let's see if I can get a little bit of that green back in there. There we go. Look at that. You've seen that for yourself, didn't you? That is, I think I'm really, really going to be happy with that. So you can create these if you're lucky enough to find these polyester ones. Someone please get a hold of the Dollar Tree and tell them to bring them back. Um, on my last channel before I accidentally deleted it. Uh, yeah, I'm not tech savvy whatsoever, and I just wanted to get rid of some older videos because I was had plans on redoing them, and I um, yeah, I deleted the whole channel, not paying attention, trying to do everything on the fly. Oh well, so I restarted one. It's it's starting to. Uh, it's going somewhere. The main thing is, is the information is there for those who want it. You know, I hope to see it grow like the other one, but the other one I had had for eight years. And um, yeah, it's just going to take some time. And all my videos are done in real time. You know, so you see the flaws and the mistakes and you see, uh, you'll hear me stuttering and, you know, talking about different things. But I think um, that's what they should be more about. my video should be more about I can't speak for anyone else's I've seen some videos well put together I mean professional level but that's not me that banging you hear is um, we're trying to get some wind picking up here along uh, 
the Gulf of Mexico coastline as we have a hurricane named Ian, which I was told actually means I am here. So I'm not too sure about that. But anyhow, he is letting us know he is going to be here. But I got really ecstatic over this and had to take a break. I done all my preparations and everything yesterday. Been working on them all weekend, so there's really not much more I can do other than what I did. And it's such a beautiful day outside and the temperature is not bombing, bombing hot. So I decided I wanted to work on this, you know, for Samhain. Because Samhain's coming fast. And I will be doing a ritual, Samhain blessing, of course. I do it every year. It is a ritual kit that I wrote. It is available in my shop. Um, very few are left, though. So if you're down in my vicinity, I am at Howard's Flea Market in Homosasa. And that's where you can get Samhain Blessing. It has gone fast. And is going fast. Out of all the ones I made. And I don't think I'm going to have much time to make many more. You know what? I think I think I really, really, I think I, I think I am really happy with this. So this is going to be, I just got to let it dry. And I can wipe, because this is watercolor, this old table I use out here, I'll just wipe it up. But I think this is going to be excellent, just excellent for my Samhain altar and also for, you know, my ancestors. Um, not just my ancestors, you know, some people think that your ancestors is like um, all these generations back of people. No, your ancestors you know you got to think ancestors are who came before and are you know maybe gone now or even what you knew before you know and are different now i use it a lot that way in bone throwings and in um oracle reads as i found it holds a lot of um truth to it so both of my parents have passed and just a week ago i lost my teacher and my mentor of the craft, my aunt, and um, her goddess Hecate called her, called her to be with her now. But I am going to, every year I set um, ancestor altar, and I invite them to come and spend Samhain with me as I do my Samhain ritual which celebrates the, um, the spinning of the wheel, which is the witch's new year. And it celebrates the fact that I had, we have celebrated 13 full moons, eight Sabbaths, another year passing, another year of growth and learning. And um, it celebrates our ancestors and the thinning of the veil and it includes three crystals that represent our ancestors and we charge them during this spell and it is for their love and their protection and their guidance and they sit on your altar until next Samhain so they can be with you throughout the whole year and I will be using the same crystals that I have used every year since I first wrote this spell kit back in 2017 when uh, I had my um, circle back in Ohio before we relocated the Sisters of the Sacred Circle blessed be to all those witches you know who you are you are strong you are beautiful you all are amazing anyhow we um done Samhain live in my Facebook group the Willow Grove Last year I didn't get to do it because we was in the midst of moving here. And um, I missed my sisters. We still stay in touch, but I miss them. And now I'm uh, going to be celebrating Samhain alone this year. You know, I'll be doing the ritual 
with myself, but that's okay because my ancestors will be here with me. I'm going to do candle divination. That's where you let candle fall. You let the wax of the candle fall into a little bowl of water. And I think I might, um, one of the activities is I need a new black mirror as I left all of my stuff at home and I make my own. So that might be a, another a video I'll be doing. Maybe as it gets closer to Samhain, I'll start to get more stuff ready for Samhain. But there you go. What do you think of that? And like I said, this is going to be, I can use this, I could have used this for Maybon. I could have used this for Samhain. And I can also use it for um, Thanksgiving. So next year, I will be able to use this for all three. But this year, I can use it for Samhain and I can use it for Thanksgiving. As it really does bring all the season together. It's just really a um it's just a uh oh see what i just did i was working with orange and i just crossed that orange in there let's see if i can take that back out with a yellow maybe got a dry spot on here for me please need to remove some orange haha <laughs> yes spirit is good there we go So I have gathered, I have gathered some twigs and I'm going to make a new um, pinnacle just for this one. And I have gathered some acorns that I'm going to use on it and some other twigs I took about this long. And I gathered them on the full moon and I left them out moon bathing for a whole month. And I took them and I put them together and I wrapped them up with hemp. And I put a clear point in there and I charged them and I enchanted them for um, protection and blessing for my home and altar. And they were set on my altar. Then afterwards, they would just sit in my house. Even if I set them up in the windowsill where they're, you know, they're out of, out of sight and out of mind. So here you go. I just, like I said, um, to recap. Wait, there's go. I found these at the Dollar Tree. You get two for a dollar. Now, you get two for a dollar. So you can use one for your autumn, and then you can make one for spring for Maybon, you know, and other altars that you may set for, I don't, um, for, from Imbolc. I'm sorry, for Imbolc, which is in February, February 1st, you know, February 1st and 2nd. So you can use it for Imbolc in February. Um, you can use it for, you know, in April, in May, in June, June starts turning to summer, you know, then you might want to find something else, but you can paint the outside like this for any flower of the season. This one I done to represent a sunflower and then the changing of the leaves. And I used the colors that went along with the season as well. It's just a little thing from, uh, Michael's. You can get them at the Dollar General. You can get them at the Dollar Tree. You know, it's just watercolors. But let me tell you, um, you don't think they last and they're durable? They do. Because you can wash these. The first one, I did my pilot. I wasn't happy with it. And so I wanted to redo it. I went to wash it out. It don't wash out that easily. It lightens like this. So this was it. And I kind of like still liked it. So I'm going to keep it. And I don't know. I think I'm going to use it for something else, but this is the one I want for my main Samhain altar. Um, I might use that one over there for my ancestor altar and this one for my Samhain altar um, to do Samhain blessings on. I think that might be uh, an alternative. So what I was saying with this, you can take this and do this for autumn and Samhain maybon thanksgiving and then you can like take these two pretty colors of spring greens and then the flower take it to like um a whitish in the middle working out to the purple and then the darker purple for like a violet if a violet's a flower you want to do so you know you can use the pastel colors to represent spring that's coming forward that is, that's what I plan to do with 
the two of these and I'll probably make a video on it when the time comes and also a video on how to do Bridget's cross and Bridget's little dolly you know and um, so yeah there you go if you would please give me a thumbs up if you would please give me a thumbs up like my video let me show you these to you one more time you can find these over at the Dollar General they're a dollar for two of them you can do one for fall and you can do one for spring since they're leaves and you can do the background like a flower these are absolutely perfect and then grab you a thing of watercolors they come with a, a brush but I have a professional set so I just use them for everything shouldn't but I do um, and uh, please if you like my video give me a thumbs up comment below uh, share if you will and subscribe to my channel and um, thank you for joining me stay safe if you're in the hurricane area or in Florida in general right now blessings to you and yours and forever stay magical blessed be